How, how are you doing, Sean? I'm doing well. I'm, I'm, you've, you've inherited a little of the Ambien I had to take to get to sleep after a red eye last night. But <laughs> so, in other words, you're still a little bit uh, on Happy. the Ambien train right now. A little bit. Okay. <laughs> now, I've interviewed you before. Yeah. How do you tell Sean Penn on Ambien from Sean Penn not on Ambien? Because you lay back in interviews in a really big way. You, you're very, you're very low key. Um, let's see. Um, I think it's pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of times I'm just regular tired. Just regular tired? Yeah. I got a challenge for you. I got uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Carter. I thought you might. Thanks. So, Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter is my guest on Friday. He's 93. Let's see if you can bring more energy to this interview <laughs> than Jimmy Carter's going to bring on Friday. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Good. All right. I saw you on the CBS uh, Sunday morning yesterday. Nice interview. Walking around your house and everything like that. You were also smoking. That gave me a heads up. You might be. Um, you say that you're not that into acting anymore in that interview. Mm. You're breaking a lot of people's hearts by saying that. Why, why don't you want to act anymore? Well... I mean, uh, the breaking hearts, to plenty of people who'd be thrilled uh, also. Um, no, wait a second. No, wait a second. People may not like your politics or, or, uh, or you. I don't know why they would dislike you, but your acting, you're a two-time Oscar winner. People, people love your acting. You, you well, know that. that's... Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I, I think um, that there's... It's always been the case... For me, that it's you know, it's all about where you engage in an expression creatively, one way or another. And I think that as I got older, well, the, the greatest thing that an actor can bring to the party is to play well with others. It's the collaboration, and I increasingly don't play well with others, <laughs> and so it becomes less enjoyable because I love that process when I love it, but I'm not loving that anymore. And that's really why I, I finally came around to, to writing a novel, because I, it was a way I didn't have collaborators. There were, there were no... Uh, I was never disappointed with me. Oh, OK. OK. So you haven't changed. You haven't changed. The, the movie business has changed, which is, which is why you, you moved on... Uh, to write, in, to write in books now. Now, the last time you were here, you were here for the audiobook of Bob Honey, who, who just do stuff. And you told me it wasn't written by you. You said it was written by a guy named Pappy Pariah, mm -hmm. who you met like 40 years ago or something like that. Were, were you lying then or are you lying now? There's a, there's a line in the book that says, sometimes I like to lie. Um, now, but, is that you saying that, or no, is that German, Bob Honey? No, it's, it's Anime Cantorid, great German rock band. Uh, no, the, um, well, here's what it is, is that I had been asked at about, from the time I was about 30, uh, because I'd been fortunate enough to live a kind of diverse life and travel a lot, to, to write a memoir, and it always embarrassed me, the idea of doing that. And, and I thought that, you know, like in the way that criticism is autobiography, typically, or that there's... Um, there's, or, or and any discussion of authorship is, is, is interesting because people will always talk about a muse or the music they hear in their head, and that seems other than them. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when I first thought about this book, I started to, to hear a rhythm of speech, a storyteller about Bob Honey. So I gave him a name, and Happy he Pariah. Happy Pariah, which became a character in the, in the novel. Uh, and um, I just decided to let it live as his for a, a bit. And now I'm here, you know, in an evolution of that process, okay. sharing the development of the earlier truth I told you. I'm on board. I'm on that train with you. I'm on that train with you. Okay, that's good. So is, is it like acting for you? You're developing a character, and basically you've improvised your character's story, and that become, became the book? Very much. It's very much like that, because you, with, without a director, without, a, um, uh, without any money pressuring the, the process, uh, you just sit right there. And once you've done it, it's a, it's a complete thing. You're not selling an idea where somebody says, I want to build you a bird, and they give you the money to do it, and they were expecting a, 
a falcon and you built him a sparrow. And you always intended sparrow and we misunderstood and they're very disappointed and their money is spent. In this case, I make the bird I want to make and then I fly it over to a publisher and it's complete. There's no fooling around. They know exactly what bird they're deciding on. If, 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 they, if they win with it, that's great. If they don't, it wasn't my fault. Because they knew what they were buying. They knew what they were buying, and I think I just got to the point where I, 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 I didn't... Res I, I, I just felt that the whole creative process, even the people involved in the creative process, had become so self-censoring in exploration of, some, of an idea of catching lightning in a bottle that there's so much processing now. And sometimes people do it very well, and, and younger people particularly, because I think their minds work in a different way, faster. Are you still challenged by it, or have you like, I've won acting, I just can't do this anymore because it's not a challenge for me? I think part of it is that the girl I fell in love with was going into a movie theater in the dark with strangers and seeing something that might last forever. And now there's so much content, I can't keep track of it, and nothing seems special. So you're blaming this on Netflix? Ne <laughs> Because they're doing 700 shows this year. That's a lot of content. Yeah, I'm probably paying off settlements for years. Netflix is. I would assume. I don't know what you mean. What do you mean they're playing? <laughs> I took us down the Netflix path. I'm sorry that I did. But what, net, what, what settlements are you talking about from Netflix? Well, maybe we should move on. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I'm happy to. I'm happy to. I'll tell you one thing. I wish you'd move on. Please don't smoke anymore. I don't mind. I mean, I, I, my parents smoked when I was a child, so it gives me happy memories to smell cigarette smoke. But, you know, we want you to be around for a long time, and those this things are bad for you. job security for oncologists. <laughs> because... That, by the way, is exactly the sort of thing that's in this book. <laughs> that's exactly what this book is like. And it's called Bob Honey Who Just Do Stuff, not Bob Honey Who Just Don't Do Stuff. Oh, so it's... So Bob, I, Bob Hane, Hane does smoke cigarettes. He doesn't. Don't. He doesn't smoke. You do, he doesn't? No. Does Pappy Pariah smoke? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which one do you, you know, have the most association with in your own mind? Well, I, this is what I meant by the, the music of this thing. I don't know, because I just... My kids always accused me of being uh, most amused by my own humor. And, and, and it was rare that they didn't think I took it a step further when they thought I was funny, and then I killed it. <laughs> Again, I didn't have them around when I wrote this either. Uh -huh. So I just went and went and went and laughed a lot. Yeah, yeah. Alone. Were you, I've, I've read a fair amount of this, is were you on ayahuasca tea or anything like that? Because <laughs> it's wild. It is wild. You really I, have to just absolutely get on the back of this Bronco because the prose goes all over the place. It's poetic at times, it's disjointed at times. What's your process of creating it? Well, it started with feeling like the whole country is on ayahuasca tea, I suppose. <laughs> and, yeah. And, yeah. I, and I, you know, I'd, you know, played my own little role in debates through the years, and, and that which seems to only lead to a divisiveness today, and I wanted to do something that in fiction, would be inclusionary of anybody. It wouldn't have, this is not a, an opinion piece. And, and even those who might, if there's such a thing as a person who will read this despite being predisposed to loathe its author, then I would use a term that you once said to me about your, your earlier show, when yeah. you talked about treating you as a, a drunken uncle. Yes. My character. This, My yes, character. yes. This, 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 for those who may find a different opinion with the politics they perceive it to represent, mm -hmm. it could be the conversation once a year with the drunken uncle. You don't want to spend all year with him. Just Thanksgiving. But, or just a couple of hours. It's a short book. And then it's a colorful conversation. <laughs> now, is it Pappy Pariah because you're a father and you are a pariah in some circles yourself? Like... Some people, you know, would shun you because of your politics or the, the people you've associated yourself with? Maybe. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've always liked the word. Pariah? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it is. Pariah's got a very pretty word. Like, they call the wind pariah. You know, it's... it's yeah. Yeah. I don't know that song. Oh, you know? <laughs> no. Do you, do you know Fly Me to the <laughs> Moon? I, I do know that song, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have to take a little bit of a break. Uh, don't go away. We'll be back with more Sean Penn.